okay the this is the next video on the solar rooftop uh, example or <laughs> model is uh, we're going to do the financing analysis and this financing analysis is not really a project finance model I call it more similar more similar uh, I don't think that's correct to say I, I call it more like how's that a, a real estate model than other kinds of uh, analysis and the reason is we have ongoing uh, uh, construction we don't have kind of a separate of a construction and an operating period now when we do this here's what I'm going to do in this video you notice all these numbers are here all these numbers are going to go away very soon which I'm very sad to do okay but um, we're going to um, work through the whole thing before I work through it I'm going to explain what's how to set up this kind of analysis now there are different ways to do this and certainly you shouldn't take any of these as the kind of the uh, any kind of hard and fast rule I start with I'm gonna start with well how much are we financing and how much equity are we putting into the company now somebody in one of my classes I think he was from Deloitte he was really a smart guy he suggested well when you do this kind of analysis make it go all the way down to the balance sheet make sure that the balance sheet balances and then come back and put your complicated things in and make sure it still balances after you after you put the more complicated things in into the uh, model and I think that's absolutely correct so right now we're starting with a hundred percent equity and uh, uh, the assumptions we're going to look at are all uh, all the way down here and we have the amount of equity that we're uh, uh, putting compared to debt then we have how, how long the debt is whether we have a cash sweep this one has a hundred percent cash sweep here are some assumptions that I was given they seem very high interest rates but we'll use them and then we have the <sighs> upfront fee and for some idiotic reason there the upfront fee that gets added one time is 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 added okay payments to fee and arrears I don't know what the hell that means the uh, uh, the we assume everything occurs at the end of the month now we're going to put some cash on the balance sheet so we can use kind of a debt service reserve account or just make some assumptions this is more like a corporate model assumption and then once we have some cash we'll have an interest income rate so there's our equity and then we put in the equity contributions and I put equity contributions for the the required financing now I haven't uh, talked about where we get this from oh no okay and then we now we'll get a debt balance so right at the start you know some right you go through a funding analysis and this is well how much did we fund from debt I shouldn't be looking at the equations because we'll put those in and then how much are we going to get from uh, I mean equity and the remainder we'll get from debt and then we have to repay the debt so we'll get a closing balance so you you start by somewhere putting a, a debt balance in please 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 I have to say this a thousand times don't jump to the profit and loss statement in any model if you've got debt and cash and in any I can't think of a, any kind of venture ca, a, 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 a SPV anything that doesn't have some, either debt or cash in it and then put the interest rates in now when, when we put the interest rates in that's pretty straightforward we have to then allocate some of the interest we compute how much we're paying to the financial institutions but one of the hardest things is allocating some of the interest during construction to either I mean the interest we pay to either interest during construction or interest expense 
then we can also put the fees, which we up here we have how much new debt we're issuing, and we can compute the fees. And to do the allocation, we need to make a little uh, account for how much is our construction work in progress. And what we do is take any capex that we, I, I'm going to stop saying we, what should be done, maybe that's too passive, what I would do, how's that, is to put the capex in and then subtract any amount that was placed in a uh, 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 capex. Now the total construction work in progress can then be comp compared to the plant balance. And this plant balance that we computed up here, this was the 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 the, the uh, excuse me, I'm doing something stupid. I'm listening to <laughs> the radio at the same time. I shouldn't really do that. It's, it's making me not give you a quality video. But um, uh, uh, So this plant balance is just the amount you place in service. It doesn't get the, the capex aren't added here. So on the balance sheet, you're going to have some construction work in progress and some uh, plant balance. Okay, and then we can take how much is allocated to uh, uh, we can allocate some of the interest based on the plant balance to interest during construction. Now once we have the debt we should also put a cash balance uh, account in and the cash balance account we need to first we again I will would first compute the amount of the minimum cash balance which could be just a percentage of revenues, a percentage of debt service, or months of debt service, however you want to compute it. If it's months of debt service, it's a DSRA account. And then you put the minimum required cash balance there and take out the opening balance of the cash. So this is just, the, in this case, 5% of the revenues. And then we see how much do we have in our balance. And that's the shortfall that we have to get from somewhere. Okay, and after we put the uh, balance in, then this shortfall uh, uh, that we get, it comes from the cash flow statement. That's a big issue. By the way, the, the uh, uh, cash sweep here also comes from the uh, uh, cash flow statement. Okay, and then we get a closing balance of our cash and compute our interest income on our opening balance. So this error arrears thing i don't know i mean it's always going to be right at the end of the uh, at, uh, at the end and then we can compute here then we go to our profit and loss statement let me see i hope i i'm putting the shift control c because that's our next big uh, uh, thing to do perhaps i should have uh, Okay, now, <laughs> I've got to show what happened here. The, I've got a, there's a, there's a new adjustment in the generic macros when you have above 300 lines. I'll explain this in a minute. Now, we make a balance for all the, the fees in the IDC. That is capitalized, so that has to go on the balance sheet. And we depreciate that in the same way we depreciate anything else. And then we can work through our income statement or a profit and loss statement and uh, that we, we, we go through the net revenues first, take the operating cost. Now I haven't put the, again, the operating cost for marketing and administrative cost. We get the EBITDA, we get some depreciation on our base facilities and then we have some uh, IDC and we take away the interest and add the interest income and we get earnings. And then we need a, uh, just in case we have some negative uh, uh, earnings before tax, which didn't happen here, but maybe after we put a whole bunch of debt in, it could happen. Then we have to carry the losses forward, which we use a max statement. I use a max statement for, and we use a max and a minimum to make sure and see how much we take out of the balance. Then we make an adjustment. We, God darn it. And then uh, uh, get the EBT and the earnings. 
And only after you've done that, you go through the cash flow statement. And the cash flow statement should be so simple. You just kind of take things from the EBITDA, the cash flow and all this. And it's not that simple because once you get to the net cash flow and this net cash flow, it goes all the way to the top. So what we do is we say, okay, here are the CapEx, here's the IDC and the fees, and that's the amount you have to finance. If that's a negative number, let's get that from equity or debt. We're not going to have any cash on the balance sheet probably to finance that. So that's what is all the way up at the very start. And that's why I didn't really explain it very well. Okay. And then once we have that, um, okay, then we go through and see how much is funded, how much of the debt and equity, how much comes from debt and equity. And we take the interest. And then we get a cash flow. Now, if this cash flow is is positive, before we pay off the debt, let's let's put some money into that cash account we had, and we we only put a, as much in as we need to 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 make the shortfall okay. And then we we <laughs> then I see well how much cash is in the cash flow sweep and sweep the cash flow up until you pay off the debt. So we're going to, I'm going to use another minimum statement. And finally, uh, have some dividends. Now, there was no debt in here. So any cash flow gets to be paid out as dividends. And then before you put in the debt, before you put in the debt, put a balance sheet together. And the big rule with the balance sheet, I've told you so many times, but is that all of the closing balances are identified somewhere. We have the closing balance of the plant, the closing balance of all this stuff. Okay. And we just take all the closing balances. Now I think to make it a little more clear, I should have really put the C uh, CWIP balance and the, the balance of plant in service. Okay, and then when I did this, it didn't balance the first time, I assure you, but it balanced. And that's, I haven't put in the debt, so I'm not sure it really works. And to get the whole balance sheet to balance, all of these will come from single accounts above, but the very last one, the equity balance, you can put somewhere else. In, in a lot of the other models I have, I put that up at the beginning, this time we put it at the end, and now you have a good test. And you maybe should put this balance sheet test right up. BS test, BS, balance sheet, balance sheet test. Uh, and that's such a big test, I would keep it in sight all the time. And you know, this is, of course, I've, I've talked about having audit st statements and a page for the audits and Perhaps I'll add that, but the, that, that's really a big one that's going to help us. And we better put that right up here while we're creating the model. Okay, now I'm going to do something very, very sad. If you understood this, there is no reason to uh, watch the other videos. Okay, um, but... If you want to see how all of these minimum and maximum functions work and all that, you can watch this. And the way it's going to take a little bit of time, so we'll make a video. I will make a video that first works through the the it it, it first works through the uh, look at this. It first works through the. I'm looking at why it didn't make the things blue. I'm fixing that in just a minute. Um, uh, we're going to first work through all the debt schedule and all the preliminary stuff. And then a second video will go through the profit and loss. And a third video will go through the uh, cash flow. And maybe I'll have enough time to put the balance sheet or maybe they'll have a fourth video on that and a fifth video. So there are going to be a whole lot of separate videos on this that work through uh, uh, item by item. Okay, so that's the end of this kind of overview video.
15 minutes it took. <laughs>